Let's take a look at user snippets, which is a really powerful tool within VS Code. This is primarily uh, targeted toward people using Knit. However, anyone working with uh, Roblox Lua or even just standard Lua could benefit from this. So right here, I have a kind of an empty project with some saline uh, boilerplate stuff. I'm gonna create a new file, I'll just call it test.lua. Doesn't really matter. Now this is what snippets will do. For instance, I can type in class and you'll see I have this autocomplete thing called class. If I hit enter or click on it, boom, I get like this boilerplate code of a, a Lua pseudo class, which is really nice. And it matches the name of the file and everything. It ready, it's ready to go. It comes with a predefined destroy method that you could throw in there and do whatever you want with it. So that's really useful. You know, there's a lot of times I want to just create a class definition really quickly and that will let me do it. So not only that, but again, for knit, you might make a service. So you might have something called my service and some sort of module. I can just type in knit service and it's ready to go. Pretty useful. I can expand that. I can make a controller with the same thing. So I start type in knit controller, boom, ready to go. Same thing with a component. Even it's some even uh, more complicated stuff going on here, but it, it gives you uh, a knit require. It creates the object class structure and includes things that are necessary for uh, using components within knit. It even comes with uh, a made created and ready to go and automatically cleaned up at the end. So pretty useful. Um, now all of my knit uh, snippets will be available within the knit repo on GitHub pretty soon. They're not there yet, but I'll add them soon. Um, but let's look at what they actually look like. So really easy. You go to file, preferences, and user snippets. And then you click on the language that you want. If you already have some created, they'll show up at, under existing. Otherwise, you have to go and find it. You can type it in and create one. I already have my Lua one. And within here, you'll see kind of a bunch of jargon. And let me pull up some documentation really quick. So this is the documentation for snippets and VS Code. Uh, quite simple to configure. Uh, I will put this link within the description. Uh, but as you can see, not super long of a tutorial or documentation here. It's very easy. Um, so go back into VS Code. For instance, I have uh, the knit require statement right here. This is probably the simplest one. So if I go to a component, let me just clear all this out. If I just type in knit, I can just autocomplete to that line of code itself. So how did I do that? Well, I have this defined here. I give it a unique name, doesn't really matter. And my prefix is what I type in the editor and that's what it captures. So you can add a bunch of different things here, just one, doesn't matter. And it'll try to match on those prefixes. So when I type again knit, it sees how it captures that prefix and then I can pre-fill it. And the body is what it will turn into when you hit enter. So in this case, I have just this string right here that I want to replace with and a short description and that's it. So very simple to create. Now it can get a little more complicated. So this is the class instance. So when I type in class, you'll see I have an autocomplete there, I hit enter. And you notice right away when I have done that, everything is highlighted that says my component and that matched the name of the file. But if I want to rename it to something else, I can just type and it'll replace everything at the same time. Uh, so all those references are ready to go. Now, the way that's done here is we'll see here uh, this kind of capture group right here. Anything with a money sign and then the curly braces here is kind of a, a predefined or user input sort of field. Um, but you can also put things in it as a default. So in this case, uh, I'm saying that this variable name right here is going to be defined by the user. That's why it was highlighted. But my default name is going to be this variable here, tm file name base, which is defined under here. File name base is the file name of the current document without its extensions. And that's why when I created that snippet in here, it predefined or pre-filled itself to be my component. 
So that's really useful. And then the rest of it is just kind of jargon for setting up the class. You know, it's just a uh, each one of these items in the array is a line of code that it, it that gets added. So pretty simple to do. Uh, easy to make your own templates. Uh, the more you kind of work on the templates, the, or uh, not templates, snippets. The more you work on snippets, the easier they are to make. Um, I don't have a lot, but I have ones that I use the most. Another really fun one is just the service. So a lot of times you want to get a Roblox service. So let's say I want to get the run service. So I can just type in service, and then it highlights just name, and then I can type in run, and then it'll get my service. Or another one is HTTP service I, I use a lot. So that and HTTP, ready to go. So very simple to quickly, uh, I was gonna say import, but get a, get a Roblox service and get it going. So hopefully that's useful. Uh, Lewis snippets or any snippets really in VS Code are really powerful. Definitely recommend people look into them and use them uh, frequently.